Principal funding for Rights and Wrongs has been provided by the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, and the Open Society Institute. Hello, I'm Charlene hunter Galt, and you're watching Rights and Wrongs, the world's only television program devoted to covering global human rights issues. Our focus this week, immigration and human rights. We kept trying to tell them not to jump. About 30 of them, Danny. There's kids, too, and women. You should see this condition down here in the basement. More horrendous than uh, you can imagine. And it's still their best home in America. But even this dungeon won't stop them from coming. This week, we begin our fourth year of bringing the world of human rights to the world's living rooms. The good news is that stories of peacemaking, conflict resolution, tolerance, and human rights heroism abound. In the coming weeks, we'll bring you many of these stories. As our program returns to the air, however, the news of human rights wrongs is also mounting, from Ireland to Israel, from Chechnya to China, and to Manhattan's Chinatown. Global Vision presents Rights and Wrongs. Human Rights Television. In its 1996 Human Rights Report, the U.S. State Department declared the People's Republic of China guilty of widespread and well-documented human rights abuses, among them arbitrary detention, forced confessions and torture of prisoners, coercive family planning practices, and severe restrictions on freedom of speech, assembly, religion, privacy, and worker rights. But one human rights issue affecting both China and the United States received scant mention in the report. It's a dark underside of China's current economic miracle. Poor Chinese workers smuggled into America, where they face hardships that almost defy description. The problem first hit the headlines in 1993, when a ship called the Golden Venture crashed near New York Harbor. Six Chinese nationals drowned while trying to reach shore and hundreds more were detained by U.S. authorities. The ship ran aground after circling the globe for months. Its frightened occupants, nearly 300 people, began jumping overboard in a frantic attempt to reach the shore. At the time, Gina Zack was in the U.S. Coast Guard. It was a windy day, somewhat foggy out. We arrived on scene, there were people in the water. We shined lights and kept trying to tell them not to jump. I participated in CPR, as well as just trying to keep the patients warm. Emergency medical technician Jordan Silver was waiting on shore. It was a pretty chaotic scene. There were lots of people, and a lot of people sort of running around, trying to figure out what needed to be done. The chaos on the beach was mirrored in the news reports. Who were these people? Survivors of a journey on what was called a slave ship. We now have the real story revealing the existence of Chinese gangsters, known as snakeheads, who are paid to smuggle human beings into America. The immigrants contend they were driven out of China by crackdowns against pro-democracy activists and Christians and by a one-child-per-family birth control policy. But there's no escaping that economics is also a primary motivation. The shipwrecked survivors were taken into custody and sent to several prisons. Nearly three years later, many remain in detention, pending appeals for political asylum. Those persons who are being held in detention have their cases very closely reviewed to see whether uh, they have claims of asylum that they can make to come into this country. And if they do, uh, those asylum claims are taken very seriously and they're processed through the courts. And then uh, many of them, in fact, do uh, succeed uh, in, in obtaining asylum. Deportation can, of course, be a deterrent. Uh, after people have had a chance to make their claims, those who don't have a basis for remaining in the country should go home. No one knows how many Chinese enter the United States illegally each year, 
but the American government says people smuggling has grown to be a $3 billion a year industry. No Chinese official would appear on camera, but an embassy spokesman issued this statement. We are always ready to cooperate with countries concerned about illegal immigration, and especially the United States. The Chinese government's policy is that the snakeheads that are caught and convicted should be sentenced to death. The illegals are, in fact, victimized three times. First, by the snakeheads, who want to use them to make a profit. They are also victimized by the Chinese government, who sees that uh, by exporting these people, it help their own economy. Thirdly, it's by the American government, at this particular point, want to use them as an example uh, of, uh, to teach other people not to come here. Coming up, we'll discuss immigration and human rights concerns with an award-winning journalist and an expert on refugee issues. But first, this report from producer John Alpert. He traveled to China's Fujian province with New York Daily News reporter Ying Chan to trace the path immigrants take to America and to tape people smugglers or snakeheads with a hidden camera. Chinese peasants pay them as much as $35,000 to reach the U.S., a country they call Golden Mountain. We're going uh, snakehead shopping. There's supposed to be a crackdown of snakeheads going on here, but everywhere you turn, you'll find one in uh, five minutes. Well, it actually took 10 minutes to find our first snakehead. He's going to tell us what's the deal for getting someone into the United States illegally. Uh, he also wants to know what do you do in the United States. Maybe his friends doesn't want to deal with whites like you, uh -huh. Americans like you. Uh huh. Let's tell him that I have a farm and a factory. Are you going to be able to get people in despite all the crackdown in the United States? Yeah, he said, I know about the crackdown, but we have people going there every month. And this will cost you thirty-two to thirty-three thousand dollars. Okay, all right, I understand the deal. Okay, thank you. Even though snakeheading is supposed to be illegal, everything was out in the open. So, Ying, where are we going right now? To see another snakehead. So every ten minutes we're meeting a new snakehead. That's right. <laughs> Just around the corner. If you go to the United States, you ask around, you'll find that my brother has a very good reputation in people smuggling. So we're dealing with a reputable snakehead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, $33,000. First, you give me a thousand dollar down payment. Right. You give me the pictures, and then after he arrived, you pay the balance, but you got to pay as soon as he arrives. The Chinese government says it's trying to stop the snakeheads, but at this government office, we discovered the opposite. Night, this is where we're going, yeah, Labor Service Department. Uh -huh. This is a state-owned enterprise. We told the vice director of this government agency that we needed farm workers, but he suggested becoming partners in a people smuggling scheme using our phony farm as a cover. So, uh, let, let me tell you then, if it's really farm labor, mm -hmm. uh, it's not too much money for you. Right. But if it's not real farm labor, mm -hmm. if it's that's the only the appearance, right. uh, it's a cover, then yeah. you can make a lot of money. Uh, give me an estimate per worker. $15,000 U.S. Per worker. Per worker. If I tada for you. Uh huh. Okay. Well, not bad. Oh, it's That's not bad. Huh? And they really don't have to work on my farm. So basically, they're serving as the middlemen instead of the snakeheads. Right. He's getting a big cut because the market price is thirty-four thousand. He's making as much as me or even more. He said, if you want to do it, do a big group, let me tell you, because this is only once in a few years. 
if I can come up with a hundred slots. You got the money? A million and a half dollars. What is he showing me, Ying? What he meant is that, look, this is our company. It's a big company. Of course we have the money. It's the government? Yes. Are, are you guys an official government organization? Uh -huh. Good deal. A million and a half bucks for a hundred workers. Right. And in Hong Kong, so right. you don't have the report. It won't show up in your bank account. Right. I'm not, and I'm not going to tell the U.S. government that I'm selling these slots. No, no, and I'm not going to tell them either, okay? <laughs> All right, see you later. Thank you. All right. It's unbelievable. It's governmental snakeheading, isn't it? That's right, and uh, they do it so openly. And they, they can't wait for you, to get, for you to get into the business with them, too. You know, the United States thinks that they're going to put a stop to this. It's like putting a finger in the dike. How many people do we have here in Fuzhou? Two million. <laughs> and more in the villages. Uh -huh. And they're all coming. And here's their destination, New York's Chinatown. Over 300 illegals come each month looking for work to pay their debt to the snakeheads, and the local police showed us where they go. When the illegal immigrants are smuggled into the country, there's numerous employment agencies. If you look over here on my left, you'll see the, the place is packed right now. Are these guys coming in the country legally or illegally, most of them? Well, that I can answer you. The majority's personnel here are here illegal, and they uh -huh. are uh, were yeah, smuggled in. Right now, we're going to go to an illegal prostitution house. A lot of the illegal women that were smuggled in have to pay off their debt. It takes three years of massaging to pay off the snakeheads. Hi, fellas. When to get your hair done? As you can see, it's not for giving haircuts. Uh, it's a massage parlor. And the person that works here also lives here, paying off a debt to the gang. You mean you never went to a barber with one of these before? A nice little steam room that somebody's in. Excuse me. The snakeheads kill or torture people who don't pay their debts. So the illegal immigrants are forced to save money by accepting the most horrifying places for a home. You should see this condition down here in the basement. More horrendous than uh, you can imagine. There's about 30 of them down there. There's kids too and women, you know, really? women and children. The illegals pay $50 a month for bed space in this underground room at 86 Eldridge Street. We had accommodations here for 30 people. We counted a uh, head count of uh, 11 males adult, 11 female adult, and one male child. So 23 we had down here. Do you live here? Yes. How old are you? Nine years old. And hey, you live down here in the basement with 30 other people? Yeah. Show me which is your bed, please. This one here is your bed here? Yep. Uh huh. And is this your mother who's going in and hiding in the other room? Doesn't Mama. Huh? Is that yeah. your mother? Yeah. Uh huh. Do you sleep in the same bed with her? Yep. How many people sleep in your bed? Two. Just you and your mother? Yep. And who sleeps up here in the other bed? Uh, is it you? We're going to get in you. Yeah. The, you do. Uh huh. Show me where you guys take a shower and go to the bathroom, okay? What's that? Is that your bathtub? Yep. And where do you go to the bathroom? Well, we place over there and then just... On the floor? Yeah. No toilet? No. They all gotta leave, and if they have no place to go, the Red Cross is on their way, and Red Cross is fine. No, 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 He said, uh, where do we want us to go? No, 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 no. And I don't want to go. I'm staying here. Where are we going to live? Only by enduring some of the worst living conditions in New York City immigrant history can these people pay off the snakeheads. They were actually fighting to stay in there, weren't they? They were trying to hang on until the last minute. That basement doesn't seem very much like the Golden Mountain to me. Well, but even this dungeon won't stop them from coming. And it's still their best home in America. Home for the Golden Venture refugees is immigration jail. And a man there, Mr. Wang, didn't know if he'd ever see his daughter again. What is your name? Wang Sangmi. Uh -huh. yeah. You left your kid behind in China. What's her name? Mom. I really feel very bad. I don't know what to say. But Mr. Wang was luckier than most of the passengers on the Golden Venture. After 16 months behind bars, he was paroled for medical reasons. 
he was reunited with his wife and daughter and given permission to stay in the United States. 18 months later, we found the whole family working in a sweatshop on 37th Street in New York City. Wang had already paid off the snakeheads, borrowed money, and gone into business. Whose factory is this the one? Oh, the My factory. What? Your factory? Yeah? Yeah. Really? How long has Momo been here? Five months. Five months? Yeah. Momo, you like it here? Momo working in the factory? She's uh, clips of threats with this. You got the whole family working here together now, huh? Sure. How many workers do you have working here normally? Uh, about 20 workers. Show me what you're making, please. Rooks Brothers? How much do they sell that for? $148. How much do you get for that? Uh, $15. $15. So it's like a, it's a thousand percent markup? To pay off the money borrowed to start their factory, the Wangs work seven days a week, even though their family is already growing again. Hey, Xiaoyu. Hey. Do me a favor. Will you stand up for me, please? I don't think I noticed something. What is it? Don't know what to do. Xiaoyu, how many months? Eight months. Eight months? Is it going to be a boy or girl? A uh, boy. Boy. <laughs> you reunited with your wife and she's pregnant? Yes. You brought your daughter over from China? Yes. You open up the factory? Yeah. Uh huh. What's the name of the factory? Uh, the, my father is uh, Common Rich. Oh, and you're calling your factory Common Rich Fashions? Yes. Happy? Yeah. Very happy. <laughs> <laughs> but the family can't stop working, even if it's bad for their health. And you're still working, eight months pregnant. I do less now. So you only work 10 hours a day instead of 14? Yeah. <laughs> They have no time to take Momo to school. She's supposed to be in the first grade. The long days and nights in the factory are taking their toll. At least the Wangs are in a prison of their own making. Scattered around America are 140 people from the Golden Venture still locked up in American jails. Of all the places in the world, about 40 Golden Venture people are being kept at the Kern County Jail outside Bakersfield in California. It's right there. This is Dai Bao Mei. She's been locked up for almost three years. Since you've come to the United States, have you seen anything besides prison walls? Have you ever been outside of jail? No, I've never seen anything. And for now, it's almost like life imprisonment. You have a family in China? I have two kids. If I'm here, I'll never be able to see them. Daigo, when you look down at your prison tag, what goes through your mind? I feel like I'll be trapped here forever. <laughs> I feel like I can never get out. I feel like I'm dead already. are watching Rights and Wrongs, Human Rights Television. Joining me now to discuss human rights and immigration issues are Arthur Helton, Director of Migration Programs at the Open Society Institute, and New York Daily News reporter Ying Chan, currently a Neiman Fellow at Harvard University, and welcome to both of you. Ying Chan, you've been covering the Golden Venture case since it first happened. What's happened to the 270 refugees who were arrested when they landed? Well, about um, 47 has been deported. <coughs> back about, to China. Back to China, mm -hmm. right. Another maybe about 40, 76 has been released. So they're working, they're working in sweatshops. Uh, when some have started their own businesses. And then about 140 are still in custody. What about the ones who are still in detention? What are their situations? Well, basically, they're just rotting in there. It's, they've been kept there, you know, three years, almost three years. Today. And um, like the, in Bakersfield, dozens of them were kept in maximum security prison. Uh, there's no program, there's no visit, 
uh, no contact visit. Uh, you can set, you can send books to them. So that the rights that normal prisoners have are being denied to them? Well, they have rights as much as a prisoner in a maximum security prison enjoys, and that's the limit of it. Arthur Helton, how does the government, any government, balance the need for having some kind of immigration control with having human rights for refugees? Well, there are really two principal considerations. There has to be effective management of an immigration system, and the people of the United States and peoples of other countries insist that governments pursue those prerogatives to manage migration effectively. As well, there has to be a balance with respect to the human rights dimension, and that includes fair treatment of those who arrive and present themselves for consideration, protection of genuine refugees. But the argument by critics of the immigration policy is that many of these refugees are in fact economic refugees and not political refugees. Do they have a point? They have a point in as much as these are people who move for mixed motives. But remember, these individuals are coming from a country that has been determined to have widespread human rights violations, in which it's documented that there are population control policies that sometimes are implemented zealously and even ruthlessly. So in that sense, you have a mixture of motives. And you need a fair procedure to determine which among those who are arriving are genuinely in need of protection and who are uninvited and subject to return. Ying Chen, in your reporting on these immigration issues, how do you see it? Is it labor law that's paramount in these, or is it immigration law? I mean, how does it break down? The point for the governments is really to enforce the labor laws instead of blaming these people for coming in uh, that uh, who drive down wages, may or may not take away jobs. You know, the issue is really enforcing existing labor laws um, that's on the books. That would have a deterrent effect on illegal immigration. That would send a message instead of blaming the victim. Are the health in America was built on immigrants coming here for reasons that many of these immigrants cite today, fleeing religious persecution, political persecution. But is there another dimension to it today? Well, certainly you see today concern about insecurity in the people of the United States and elsewhere, the economic insecurity that many people feel. Uh, for that reason, there certainly has been recently uh, greater emphasis on reducing and managing immigration. But I think this is a very universal story. Uh, you look with admiration at the courage of people who make this sojourn. You respond to horror with the desperate circumstances they find themselves in, either shipboard or in sweatshops. You are compassionate for those who can assert claims to refugee protection, and yet you fear that others may come and that it may be a lure for many thousands of others. And that's the dilemma that I think our officials and our people find themselves in. When you look to the future and the whole economic instability in the world, do you see this problem improving, getting any better in the, in the near future? No, this is part of the new world disorder. You will have borders and sovereignty and states at war with individuals, human rights, claims of persecution, uh, economic uh, migrants. This will be very much the story over the next 25 or 30 years. Well, Arthur Helton and Ying Chan, thank you. We close with some dramatic artwork created by detainees from the Golden Venture. Cobbled together from cardboard, toilet paper, glossy magazines, and glue, it speaks to the indomitability of the human spirit. I'm Charlene Hunter Galt. Thank you for watching Rights and Wrongs. The U.S. government put us in prison a long time ago now. But I cannot give up my hope, my dreams. I believe the U.S. government can give me freedom and let me live here. Sometimes I made some paper birds 
so that I can express my dreams. Principal funding for Rights and Wrongs has been provided by the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, and the Open Society Institute. Rights and Wrongs welcomes your written comments and suggestions. You can also order a transcript for $5 or a video cassette for $29.95 plus $5 shipping and handling by writing to the Global Center, Box 311, Radio City Station, New York 10101. Checks or money orders only. Credit card holders may call 1-800-541-2535. You can also reach us by email. And please visit our website on the World Wide Web.